All right, guys, in this video, we're just going to have a very quick chat about the power of being frugal or the ability to switch frugality on and off, dial it up and down on an as needed basis. So you don't have to be a tight wad all of the time, but having the ability to dial down your spending when it's called for, or even just uh, when you see an opportunity to put some money aside where things are going pretty good and you think, oh, now might be a, be a good time to dial things back a bit so that we can sort of beef up our reserves so when maybe things aren't so good down the track. Having the ability to do that is an absolute asset to you and your family. And it's also a uh, really good way to provide a sense of security just in the fact of knowing that you have the ability to do this. So if then times turn bad, if you lose your overtime, if you lost your job even, even or if you got cut back to part-time, you don't have to go into a panic because you, you know that you can survive on a lot less than what you may be currently spending at this moment. So when times are good, you might loosen your belt a little bit, but then you might also say, oh, hang on, I've got a holiday coming up in summer and I don't want to put that on the credit card. Why would you put it on the credit card and pay 20% interest? That's madness. Instead, you work hard, now you cut back on a bit of spending and you build up some savings so that then when you go on that holiday, you know that that holiday is paid for and you do not have to worry about paying interest or going into debt and or having to work harder when you get back to pay for it. It's already paid for. If you want to take that a step further, over a period of time, when the times are good, instead of going out and spending all this money like everyone else, like the Joneses, instead, save, cut back a bit, put that money into income producing assets like dividend stocks and rental uh, properties. I'm not giving you financial advice, but these are the things that I think about. If I wanna put money aside to uh, provide, rather than putting in the previous example where I said saving up for a holiday, over a period of time, you can save up money to put into income producing assets that will pay for that holiday. It'll pay you while you are away. This is dividend money coming in, rental money coming in, coming in while you sleep. You wake up in the morning, there's money in your bank. You can't argue with that, can you? So it's all about making hay while the sun is shining because the sun doesn't shine forever. It's been shining pretty solidly for the last few years, but there are definitely some clouds on the horizon and it is probably about time that the economy goes into a bit of a recession. It's been a while since we've had a fully fledged recession and these things do move in cycles. So you need to be prepared for that. So you make hay while the sun shines, you build up your savings, you build up your investments and you uh, can go into a downturn if a recession does come as it inevitably will at some point in time. You don't have to go into a panic. You know straight away you can cut back. You've got this other dividend income. You've got this other rental income or you've got this cash savings buffer. You've done something to cushion the impact of the bad times when your uh, week to week revenue from your job or whatever it may be starts to dry up or if your overtime hours get cut back or if you lose hours at work. By having this ability to dial up and down your spending to kick into frugality mode when the time calls for it, this is a massive asset. It makes you more resilient. It gives you that sense of security. It means when you know you don't necessarily have to do it now, but then when the time does call for it, you know. You know you can switch into frugal mode. Uh, you can change the way you do family outings, doing sort of activities that cost less or don't cost anything at all. You can change the way that you go on holidays instead of going on an overseas trip, you can go on a camping trip. Instead of going to the movies, you can go for a hike. Things like this, there's many things you can do. You can look at your cooking. Are you cooking kind of gourmet meals? You can cut out the gourmet cooking, the expensive ingredients. You can swap certain ingredients out for other ingredients, cut it back, go back to more of a traditional style, meat and three veg, for example, or vegetarian cooking. If meat has become too expensive, there's many things you can do. You can cook in bulk, a big batch of food on one night and get a few nights out of it, freeze it, take it to work the next day, heat it up for dinner another night. There's many things you can do with your cooking to save money there. Have some everyday skills that you can uh, pull out when the time comes for it. For example, your car needs a service. Are you gonna go take it down the road to the mechanic and pay 200 bucks to have an oil change and a new filter when it is very easy to do it yourself? It takes about half an hour. It costs about 30 or 40 bucks for the oil and the oil filter. And you can very easily do it yourself and save 160 bucks while you're at it. 
this is the kind of thing that if you don't know how to do, you can easily find out how to do it by talking to someone you know who knows a bit about cars or even just looking up on YouTube how to do an oil change. It's a pretty straightforward thing. This is one example of a new skill or something you can learn to save you a lot of money. I'm sure if you think about it, there's all kinds of things that you could do like for example you might be hiring a gardener because you're just too busy at work or when maybe if you lose hours at work you're gonna have a bit more time you might be better off going and getting your own lawn mower and mowing your own lawn things like this can save you money when you have that extra time and you need to cut back on spending instead of spending money on certain uh, food produce that costs a lot of money certain vegetables you might want to grow them yourself at home so you can still have this particular ingredient that you like but you don't have to spend a lot of money on it one of the beauties of having the ability to be frugal or acting frugally is that it teaches you to appreciate the simple things in life and not the material things in life. You won't get satisfaction out of going and buying a brand new jacket or going on a you know, $10,000 holiday. Instead, you're going to be living a bit more simply. It's gonna give you space for your mind to think. Um, you're going to enjoy little things like having a nice meal or spending time with your family or friends or just going out and sitting in nature. You're going to appreciate the little things more, but also the things that cost you a lot less. It's a win-win situation if you can train yourself or if you have that ability to be frugal when the time calls for it. And the great thing of all this is, you, like I've said, you don't have to be like this all the time, but just having that ability, having that skill being able to dial up and dial down your spending when the time calls for it. And it's not just about spending, it can be about income as well. So maybe you go and drive for Uber or do some kind of night work, work at the supermarket, fill shelves. Don't worry about thinking, oh, I'm too good for this. Recessions don't reward pride. You have to do what is required to get through to the other side. Who cares if you think that you're too good to fill shelves at the supermarket at night? Nothing matters. All that matters is that you're bringing in that extra income and you'll be better off for it.